Sometimes it's nice to add color to a sign or other woodworking project by applying paint, either directly on the surface or as an infill for areas that have been carved with a V-bit. Some skilled people are able to apply paint by hand. I, however, am not one of them. So to make signs like these, I rely upon an alternate method that uses repositionable vinyl as a paint mask. This video provides an overview of that approach. So I went ahead and cut out a blank for the sign. It's been sanded, dusted off, wiped down with mineral spirits, and allowed to dry. The next step is to apply clear shellac. I wipe on two relatively thin coats about an hour apart. After each coat is dried, I check the smoothness of the surface and sand very lightly if necessary. Now it's time to apply the vinyl paint mask. I've been using Orical 631 for this purpose. To control the material during this process, I use a couple of padded trigger clamps to secure the sign blank and vinyl sheet to a table, or in this case, a piece of plywood. I peel the vinyl back about halfway and cut the backing with scissors. Then with a flexible plastic spreader or a hard rubber roller, I smooth the vinyl onto the wood, making sure no air bubbles are trapped underneath. The piece is then rotated and the process repeated for the other half. I try to move the applicator from the center to the outer edges at a slight angle. To accurately and securely position the sign blank on the router table, I use a right angle jig that offsets the lower left hand corner of the piece to one and a half inches in both X and Y directions. Two pieces of scrap wood are then screwed down to the spoil board on the top and right side of the piece to hold it tight against the jig. I like to run each toolpath twice, the initial carving followed by a cleanup pass. Sometimes pieces of vinyl will get stuck on or wrapped around the bit. If this occurs, I'll just pause the router and clean the bit off. Finally, I avoid using any form of dust collection when working with vinyl masks, out of concern that the suction could lift up the edges. <laughs> So for the most part, the carving came out clean. There were a few fuzzies left in the outer border of the sign, but those can easily be removed with a folded piece of sandpaper. With the carving completed, it's time once again to pull out the clear shellac. This time I'm going to be applying it with a foam brush, and applying it rather heavily. After one hour of drying time, I repeat this same process. This sign involves three different colors. Since I'm going to be spraying the paint, I need to cover the areas that receive a color other than the one currently being applied. I use quick release blue painter's tape for this purpose. The order in which the colors are applied is somewhat arbitrary in this case. I'm going to spray the red paint first, followed by the black. The blue stripes will be done last, as that color is actually applied to the top surface of the wood and I just assume not put tape over top of that. For each color, two to three fairly light coats about five minutes apart are usually adequate to achieve full coverage. In between colors, I wait about an hour or until the overspray on the mask is dry to the touch. Once the last coat of paint is dry, the mask can be removed. Some of this can be done by hand, but I find a single edge razor blade is really helpful in getting the vinyl started in places. A pair of tweezers also comes in handy. After the paint is fully cured, I usually apply one to two coats of either gloss or satin clear. And that's the process. Well, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time on CNC Router Projects Start to Finish.